Today's audio story is coming in from the planner. So sit down, relax, grab yourself a cup of coffee, some tea, some wine as we uh, read through this. All right. Let me move this over here so I can see. I don't want to make a bunch of noise. All right. Hey, Allison and Chris. My partner and I have been together for about three years. We're not married or common law married yet. We recently decided to buy a condo together, though. Before buying, we talked about the ownership model and we agreed on owning 50% equity each. However, he didn't have the money yet and I ended up paying for the down payment and closing costs. It's been a few months since we bought it, but both of our names are listed on as co or listed on the, you know, the deed as co-owners. But I'm still the only one paying for everything, the monthly mortgage, utilities, insurance, etc. My partner is self-employed and cash flow is a problem for him. Sometimes he gets paid for projects, but sometimes he doesn't. I have a full-time job, so I get a monthly salary and have a stable income. Every time I try to start a conversation about how he's going to pay me back, we get stuck on the same issue, cash flow. He didn't seem to be able to commit to a solution that works for both of us. It doesn't seem fair to me because on paper, he owns 50% of the condo, but he hasn't paid a single dollar. To date, I've paid over $125,000. I'm worried that the more we delay this, the more complex this gets and the more debt he accumulates. I'd like to have the money back so I can put it into investments. I'm thinking that if money is a problem for him, he can own less than 50%, say maybe 10%, and then I own 90%. And then we can work out a monthly payment plan. In the future, if he wants more equity, he can pay me more and we can adjust our co-ownership contract. I'm curious to hear your suggestions. Are there better arrangements? Thank you. So this is a good one. There's a lot going on. Allison, go ahead and take it away. Just I'm looking I, at your eyes right now. <laughs> go ahead and take it away. I feel like I need to research this because I'm just wondering, okay, number one, how did he qualify for co-ownership of this mortgage if he's self-employed? He has to show like at least two years worth of tax records and show that he makes enough money to be able to afford his part of the mortgage or them together. Maybe- yeah. Maybe, maybe they, together. Maybe, maybe she's carrying it all. Yeah, she, she could have that, a very good job and just qualified yes, on her own. That's true. Uh, so another thing is, I feel like, uh, I I don't want to say like you shouldn't have made this decision, which, you know, or anything like that. But I do feel like maybe this decision was made without like mathing it. Does mm. that make sense? Like, yeah, I feel um, like, you know, he, thank you. Look at Matt's. <laughs> Matt wants you to see what kind of cup. Oh, uh, boo, boo! Oh, Chris is Chris We're is cheering. Those California Chris is cheering. Week. Boo! Oh yeah, because Los Chris Angeles. Chris is Chris is cheering. He no. likes the Lakers. I no. mean, no, the how, Golden State Warriors. No, how did Sacramento Kings? Sacramento Kings. No, wait, wait, he likes t- the tell, no, tell, he likes the Warriors. Tell him I said. Tell him I said. Fly Eagles, wait. fly. Oh, Chris said. Um, Cowboys is America's. Okay, get out of here. (laughs) How do I take you off the screen? How do I get completely mute her? Oh, you just ruined my whole night. (laughs) Good. My work here is done. (laughs) That's what friends are for. All right, so Allison has a giant Dallas Cowboys cup full of vodka, and now she's ready. Water, (laughs) full of water. See, Logan's on God's side. (laughs) Let's go, Cowboys. Um, Okay, so anyway. I think that maybe like they didn't, they, I feel like they did not do this math before because he seriously, if he has this much of a cash flow problem, then let's say his half of the mortgage payment is $1,500. Then I feel like they should have known this when they were figuring it all out. And it should have mm. been like a red flag of, well, I can't afford that every single month. If he can't afford the half of the down, his half of the down payment, and if he's not able to afford the monthly mortgage payment, either he is taking advantage of the fact that I I feel like he's taking advantage of the fact that he knows she's going to pay it. Mm. Like he doesn't have to worry about it. There's no like, yeah, there's no stress. There's no pressing issue at all because he knows that she is not going to let it fail because then that's going to impact her credit score. Yeah, exactly. So he doesn't need to do it. So right now there's no pressing issue with it. And then I also feel like maybe they didn't do a, I don't want to say a good job, but maybe they did not have enough of a conversation about how this would work financially for him. Yeah. And so I feel like I need to do some research on this because I'm sitting here wondering like, can we just get him completely off? (laughs) Like, no, I'm serious. I think he should just be like, I own 0%. You you can, like you can go through and, and have someone removed from a title. 
I think that he should be removed. And I think that the way for this relationship, because there's, there's going to be a lot of resentment. There's going to be a lot of like frustration. So I say, if he's not paying a dime, he shouldn't own a dime. So take him off of the mortgage, let it be your home. And if you want to charge him rent, rent great, clearly, I mean, he's, he's living there rent free right yeah. now. So it doesn't sound like she necessarily needs the money. She wants the money, but I'm assuming she can swing it. But I don't think he should have ownership of a home that he is not participating in buying, especially if they're not married. Like, I think this is a totally different situation. If you have, you know, a, a working wife and a stay at home dad, right. Mm. And he is taking care of kids and taking care of the house, but that doesn't seem like that's what this is. No, like there's, there's a lot going on with this. I was doing some quick Googling here. So yeah, you can, you can remove someone from a mortgage. Uh, you obviously have to have their buy-in on it. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can't like, just like kick them off if you've already signed all the paperwork together. Yeah. So I don't know how open this person would be to this arrangement because it sounds like, I don't know if they've had this conversation. If they've had the conversation of let's change our ownership percentage to change our arrangement since you haven't given me money. Cause it sounds like they haven't even gotten really through the conversation of mm -hmm. how are they going to continue to, I guess, get his money either for one, give him to pay a share, but then also pay the back money he owes between down payment mm -hmm. and all the other things that, cause it sounds like she said, it's not going to happen. He said he, she, he's not even paying utilities or insurance. So it sounds oh. like he might not be contributing anything. I don't know. Maybe he's, you know, buying groceries or something. He might mm -hmm. be doing something else, but it sounds like uh, housing, which is the mo most expensive thing you're going to pay your biggest bill. Mm -hmm. He's not contributing. And I was wondering, I was like, Oh, when did they send this question? And maybe this was like during the pandemic when everyone was buying a house, but they sent this around November of last year, November, 2022. Okay. So and they said it's been about three years. So 2019. So it's not that rush that everyone mm -hmm. had to buy a house, but even without like the pressure of everyone like, Oh, I got to buy a house quick right now. Uh, sometimes I think you end up in a situation where maybe one person is really enthusiastic. And I don't know if mm -hmm. the other person, if the, if the guy in this, who's not paying anything was mm -hmm. really excited to do this, or if it was the planner who wrote in, if she was the one who was like, I'm really excited to do this. I, 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 I want to hop on it and, yeah. and, and buy this house. But like you said, they didn't have any type of structure in place because mm -hmm. he, he knew, like, it's not a surprise. You don't just wake up one day. It's like, you know what? I had the cash flow, but now I don't yeah. have the cash flow. I don't know what happened. Like, yeah, this, this guy knew that he couldn't afford to do this. Um, yeah. Or it, he knew he was going to decide not to contribute, if, even if he mm -hmm. could. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it says he owns 50% of the condo, but he hasn't paid a single dollar. Nothing. And that, that's that's extremely unfair. That's that's it is unfair very unfair. And very messed up to this person that their partner is just like, ah, you know, now's not a good time. Because I'd want to know too, like, does he mm -hmm. go out to eat? Does he have a car? Does he pay insurance? Mm -hmm. Does he have health insurance? Like, what what are the responsibilities does he have that he's paying for? Or yeah. are they are they are they just leaving them this person stuck with all the, I, the bills? I almost feel like he's not. She's not going to get money from him. Like I, no, I feel like she's holding on. I keep. I'm looking over here because I keep reading it. But she says, you know, she wants, I'd like to have the money back so I can put it into investments. But if she's paid over $125,000, then that's essentially, you know, he owes her what, half of that? Yeah. I just don't see her getting that money back if he can't even afford to give her a dime. If he's not making, okay, not even let me say that afford. Let me rephrase that. If he's not making it a priority to give her any money, because no matter what he's doing, he can pay her something. Anything. Even if it's ten dollars, I mean, and it seems so measly and silly, but it's almost like the when you're not willing to even do one thing or make one move in that direction, it, that means it's not a priority to you. And I get yeah. it; it's not a priority to him. He's living rent free, utility free, in a condo that's half his. That's just not right. No. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I think that she should say, "You either need to start paying me a set amount every single month." Or because I have financially contributed to this entire, to this entire home, I want you taken off of the, of the mortgage. And if he can't like understand that, and it, he might be upset at first. And if he can't come to terms with that, then I don't want to say like dump him, but just realize that he doesn't necessarily have your best interests at heart. No, no, it definitely shows a lack of respect, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that one, you let the other person take on that much responsibility but that you won't even have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know ego gets in the way, especially for men, you know, 
Yeah, I'm sure. I thought you said eagle, eagles. like a flying bird. The eagles, the Philadelphia eagles never get in the way. All they do is win. They but do. the eagle can get in the way because, you mm-hmm. know, just this is how guys are and maybe that's part of it he's like i don't want to talk about it because it's admitting my failure and i can't provide there could be all these other things going on but Mm -hmm. despite all of that you still have this partner you're still leaving them kind of to just carry the weight of everything and that's definitely Mm -hmm. not a fair thing to do to them no even if you even you need to swallow your pride and have a conversation and say you know what i thought i could do this when we started Mm -hmm. this we started the house search so i found the paperwork i felt really comfortable but you know business went a lot it, it got really bad over the pandemic and i it, i thought it would recover and it never did and i had plans to pay you back and it did. Like, you have to just man up and then explain what happened and mm-hmm. say i'm sorry and this is how i can try to make things better maybe you need to go get another job because clearly business isn't working <laughs> working out for you <laughs> so it might chris be- is gonna say it like it is here <laughs> man up get a job Pay your lady back. Is you that keep, what you want to say? Yeah, because you can't keep doing this. There, that's that's it's wrong to keep doing that to mm-hmm. someone. Because yeah, like, if your business has been bad, if you have no money to pay towards a house for three years, that's a failed business at this point. Like, yeah, it's a, <laughs> that's a business I, that's making no yeah. money. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, sure there's yeah, there's always a lot of circumstances we don't know. There's probably details mm-hmm. that we d- haven't heard yet. But just service level, sounds like you might need to go get a job and 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 just at least enough to pay her. Go work at Starbucks. Get to cover some health insurance or something. Get, do yeah. something to help out and don't just sit there and be a mooch because that's not fair. Okay, so this makes me want to ask you this next question, which is kind of in the similar realm here. What are your thoughts on just people who are not married or are not common law married owning property together? Ooh, you know, mm. that's a tough one, right? Because, you know, not everyone has to get married. You could be in, you know, people have lifelong relationships and they never get married, like, and they're committed and they're fine. And being married doesn't mean that you're going to be committed and stay together forever. And, you know, yep. so it, it goes both ways. I would say you just got to, you got to be careful. Like you have mm. to really talk this through because a house is a big commitment. Like that's a mm-hmm. lot. And if you're just going to, if you just met somebody, you know, like six months ago, I would probably suggest not doing that. <laughs> but, but yeah, you got to be careful with stuff like that because you got to make sure that you're on the same page with this person. You've had extensive talks about money. Like you guys can mm-hmm. talk about everything. You're comfortable letting it all out. You know exactly what each other make, you know, how much each other save, invest, how much debt you have. You have to know each other's financial lives in and out before you even decide to make a big purchase like that. Because Okay, hold on. But there are married couples that don't oh, yeah. know each other's financial lives in and out, and they still make a big purchase. They like probably that. shouldn't buy a house either. <laughs> so you're okay. You're saying across the board. Yeah, just across the board. Or not. Yeah, like you just got to okay. know it. And I think it's just the only reason why there's like the extra hesitation with a you know couple that's dating versus a couple that's married is because we're just making the assumption that a married couple knows each other better and have kind of committed and that they'll stay together yeah but obviously that's not true we really the statistics show that it's it's not true so i just say just in general married or not married you gotta really know what's going on with each other financially because Mm -hmm. it's a big deal because if it all falls apart it's a lot harder to figure out what's gonna happen with the house and a lot more expensive maybe to go through that process than if you're renting an apartment absolutely and it's well number one expensive and then number two especially if you qualify for a mortgage together and yeah. then you go down to a single income. I know, I know I'm thinking of two friends I have that have recently been divorced in the last year and both women took on the mortgage payment. Mm, that's and hard. so now there's added stress of making sure you're making that mortgage payment and covering that mortgage payment. And that, you know, if they had been renting, there would just be less stress. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and they were married. So those are examples of, of people who were married. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this, on, on, on non-married couples buying a house together? I mean, I don't recommend it. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's too, I think it's too scary. Um, spoken as someone who, you know, I moved in with Matt before we were married and <gasps> I, <laughs> I know. And then I wore, and I wore white at my wedding. I wore white at my wedding. So I, but, and that was seen as very risky because, oh, well, what do you do if you, if you break up, you're both on the lease and then you're in this difficult situation. And so the way I see it is, okay, it's really, you're, you're thinking about it in worst case scenario, which, you know, can seem very pessimistic and very depressing, 
but it's also a way to protect yourself mm. in the worst case scenario option. Now I think about me and Matt in worst case scenario of, okay, if someone dies, <laughs> if one of us dies, how are we going to continue to make that mortgage payment? Yeah. And that's more of like my worst case scenario. So everyone has their own version of worst case scenario. And when you're buying a property with someone that, you know, you're not uh, married to, obviously it just complicates things a little bit more. Um, and not to say that like you can't do it or that you can't get out of it because you can, but um, I just don't like to, I don't want to complicate my life and I don't want people to complicate theirs. And it just seems like renting is just a more um, easier solution. And if, if there is a complication, if something goes wrong, it's a very, it's, it's a less expensive solution mm. to a problem. So if you move in together and you have to break a lease, or if you have to have a lease by yourself, you know, you buy your partner, you pay your partner out of the lease or whatever, and you have to pay for that apartment, at least it's temporary based on how long your lease is. Exactly. I mean, because like if you break up and you have a house together, I mean, you gotta, you're more than likely going to have to either sell mm -hmm. it or one of you is going to try to get a loan to cover the rest mm -hmm. of the other half of the mortgage or to cash that person out. So yes. yeah, it just, it's, it's, if you're, it's kind of like if you, if you aren't for sure committed for the very long term future, buying a house yeah. together is probably not a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably not do that. Yeah. <laughs> because, it, yeah. Right. It, and, and I, but I like, I want to come back though to what you originally said that, you know, no matter what you do, whether you are married or you're not married and you decide to make such a massive financial commitment, because that's really what you're yeah. doing. Right. It's not that Chris and I think you're going to get divorced or you're going to break up if you're dating. It's yeah. not that. It's that you are making a very, very, very large financial commitment with another person. Yeah. And so I love how you're how you said before, really having those very open and honest conversations about your budget, about your money, about your abilities, even percentages like, well, what would your half of the mortgage payment be in terms of percentage of your take home pay? Because it's not that we are like, you know, raining on people's parade who <laughs> who are dating and we don't think that they're going to be committed. It's just taking yeah. on massive commitments like that should like just put it off as long as you can. <laughs> I think. Yeah, it, 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 just give yourself some time to think it through and make sure mm -hmm. it's the right or decision. Or have one person do it and the other person rent. Like I think it's great to have like, you know, if you're especially if you're in a relationship, but you're not married, have one person purchase the home and then the other person rent, you know, rents part of it, pays for part of it. But they got to agree though. They have to agree. The other person of has course. to agree that's the arrangement they want. I think going kind of going back to the beginning of the, the, the story where basically this person, our, our writer put all the money down, basically went through all the work and the uh, partner's not really communicating with them. Mm -hmm. I think, think it's going it's going to be a difficult conversation right because if they won't even talk to you about how they're going to repay you it's also going to be a very difficult conversation to discuss with them taking them completely off the mortgage right mm -hmm. yeah. so i think either way you're it's going to it sound like this person could be like pulling teeth to try to get through these conversations mm -hmm. but yeah. you kind of have to start the process and as a thing we're not lawyers so no. What? Uh, I know it's hard to believe. I've been telling you, I've been covering all your court cases all this time, but I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't know what the legal ramifications are of this. Mm -hmm. Like if you get into a situation where they're not cooperating, but they also aren't paying, then that's when you might need to just get a little, yeah. seek a little legal advice on what your options mm -hmm. are because yeah, it, it we're... might you know, be a little more difficult. Basically, how can you make your life as streamlined and seamless as possible? Unlike Logan's parents. I don't know if you see this comment he just put uh, up, but put he said my, but I, or his grandparents, my grandparents bought a house and were never married. That's fine. They stayed in that house until they both died. Didn't write a will. And then it was chaos, mm. chaos. So here you go. Here's the classic example. It's not that Logan's grandparents were committed to each other or anything, but there is chaos ensues because of the, the legal side of it. Yeah. And, and so that makes it, that just makes it difficult, but, um, but good luck. 
to the planner. We want to know what you decide to do moving forward. What are, you know, and if you have that conversation, how was it received? Um, oh, yeah. Well, before, you, that, before you wrap it up, though, I, I'm going to ask you one more question. Okay. Now, do you do you foresee a situation in which you can go to your partner who you've agreed to buy a house with together, which you technically bought it together, even though they didn't put any money in, and mm-hmm. you tell them, you know what, since you haven't paid, I would like to move this mortgage 100% into my name until we can come up with some type of agreement since I've put in all the money. Do you foresee a situation in which that person will, you know, budge on that and be like, I guess, receptive to that? How do you see I that? think that's very reasonable to ask. I think it's very reasonable, but I just want I to get your I think it take. is very reasonable to ask. It's like someone, like, I don't know, if, if a famous painter, Da Vinci, was painting, what's a, what's a Da Vinci painting? Give me a Da Vinci. Is that Starry oh, Night? Is that... Uh, no, I don't think that's Da Vinci. Who's, who's, who did Starry Night? That is uh, Van Gogh. Or... Van Gogh is Starry Gogh. Night. It's like if Van Gogh was commissioned to do Starry Night with Da Vinci, but Da Vinci <laughs> never lifted a paintbrush. That Da Vinci's so then, lazy. Right? And then Da Vinci wants to sign his name at the you know bottom right-hand corner of that painting. That would be like Van Gogh being like, listen, dude, you did not lift a single paintbrush. I did all of the painstakingly hard work mm. in this starry night. All those you know, stars. up close, it's a big mess. And then you back up and it's beautiful. And that's from me and my doing. I don't think that Da Vinci should be able to sign his name on Van Gogh's work. Same thing, different mm. scenarios. There we go. Look, I said Mona Lisa, which seemed like that should have been an obvious answer that either one of us would have came up with. <laughs> oh, <laughs> eh. whatever. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, Essentially, the planner bought a house by themselves. Like yes. they, they bought a house by themselves and just graciously put someone else's name on it with them. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I think it's 100% fair to get this house in your name. Not saying it's going to be easy. That's part, as, um, if they're not cooperative, it could cause you a lot of headaches. But in if we're talking about the fairness of life, that would be the mm-hmm. fair arrangement. It's like Usain Bolt, right? I, goes, l- I would. L- I'm, I can't wait to hear where this is going. He trains and runs the race, mm-hmm. right? And his friend is like, "Oh, I want I, I, I um designed your shoes for this race. I designed your race shoes, and so I or I I, I no. Here, here's what it is. It's like Usain Bolt, Bolt okay. right? And he's like." Oh, one day he's at school, at high school, and his friend is like, dude, you're really fast. You should start training in in speed running and sprinting in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And Usain Bolt is like, you know, I think you're right. I can, I think I'm going to do that. And he starts training and he goes and he wins the Olympics. And it's like his high school friend coming back and saying, oh, I want a piece of that gold medal because (laughs) I, I told you it was a good idea. Because I told you it was a good idea and I sent positive vibes your way. This is what this is like. You know, they, it, you took us on a wild ride, but I do agree that is a good, that's a good comparison thank you. now. That's a good analogy. <laughs> this is what makes me a good teacher. Okay. This is what makes me a good I, teacher. I would pay money to sit in on a math class that you teach. Oh, I, I had a whole thing with... Um, turning fractions into mixed numbers and it was all about ice cream and i had a i had a a chant we would say about ice cream and you put your ice cream in the freezer and your cone on the outside and that and and it worked i'm telling you right now i'm saying i put me on the wait list for whenever you teach a virtual (laughs) math class for adults uh, okay i'm i'm gonna be there okay good good Uh, but no okay i think i think that's i think we covered it i just want to make sure we got we we, i asked you that before we got out of here Usain Bolt would say, you keep the mortgage, the planner. Okay. And who else? As would uh, Van Gogh. The mortgage is yours. Be like Usain Bolt and Van Gogh and take credit for what you've done. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I would say, you know, to wrap it up. Have you already wrapped it up? I feel like I'm wrapping up something you already wrapped up. I'm putting another layer of wrapping paper on the gift you already wrapped. Putting a bow on top. Putting a bow on this. I wrapped it up. You're putting a bow on top. Try, try to have a conversation. Let's not let's not assume it's going to go poorly. And just I think be very clear. You need we we need to have this conversation. It's stressing me out. It's bothering me. We got to get through this conversation. And if 
you can't do that, then that's when I would start just researching your other options. Maybe talk to a lawyer, get to understand the process better, what your options are. Uh, so that way, you know, can I divide my ownership up more? Can I remove someone from a mortgage? If they're not cooperative, how is that luck? You need to start getting into That's when you really need to start asking the difficult questions. Mm -hmm. uh, but we wish you the best of luck. And I hope it doesn't have to go to that. I hope it goes to you get them to talk and you can work this mm -hmm. out. Yes. And if anything fails, in the words of Chris, just play this. Man up. <laughs> get a real job. And respect your woman. There we go. I agree. So thank you to the planner for taking the time to uh, send in that story. We really do appreciate it. We appreciate all of you taking the time to entrust us with your awkwardness. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be like the planner and leave your story, please do. We're always looking for more to fill up future episodes. You can go to awkwardpodcast.com or Allison, where, where should they call if they have a, they have a question? They, they can call 707-200-8259. Leave us a message. We promise we won't pick up. We're not going to talk to you about your card's extended warranty. Just let us know your awkward story. It'll take you 30 seconds, and it's going to be so good. 